Hello everyone, it's Polcat. Welcome back to another video. It's not Grand Theft Auto 4 and it's not GTA 5. This is a special video. It kind of intertwines with the 300th video that's um, going to be out soon, actually. It's in the process of uploading. Um, but the, the cool thing about this one is it's a, it's a setup um, you know, recorded from my iPhone, so I'm sorry if quality is not too good, especially in my voice. It's recorded from my iPhone. Uh, showing you my setup. Not only am I showing you the setup, but 30 minutes after the after my setup uh, video, I explained in depth on how to get Grand Theft Auto to work properly. Uh, you know, as as by my standards, I guess work properly. Um, you know, I show you my steps. I show you how to import cards. I show you how to import LPDFR. But enough of that. It's an installation video, and it's a my setup. So I hope you guys enjoy, and I hope you guys get a lot of information to where you're able to get in game and start playing by yourself or even with some friends. So here it is, and I hope you guys enjoy. We're here looking at the setup in which the magic is made from. Um, you know, we have our nice L-shaped desk here with way too many things I'm breaking behind me. That's good. What did I do? I'm sorry. Anyways, I was just looking at the problems that I just broke in my TV screen, which is always wonderful. So, basically, here is the computer. We have the desk. We have a keyboard, obviously, because that's can be used to make a computer work. Um, I have a whole bunch of fans going in my room because California is not the coldest day today. Um, I guess we'll start with, I guess, just the stuff on the desktop. These are two, two 21 inch, no, 21 or 22, maybe 23 inch, not sure because I've got them so long ago. Um, the one to the left is an LED and the other one to the right is an LCD. You got much more nice, crisper, um, I don't know what I'm trying to say. But yeah, the one on the right is way nicer, even though it costs like only 20, 40 bucks more. Anyways, two screens, um, how I usually get my um, editing and all that done, or and or just relaxing on the computer. Over here to the right, we have a Mac that sits there useless as ever. And over on the left side is an iPad, because, you know, the more eye stuff you have, the life seems to be complete. So, moving down towards the bottom, um, you know, we got a Turtle Beach just to... Um, you know, do Grand Theft Auto 5 record or Grand Theft Auto 4 recordings and uh, listen to gameplay. You got an Xbox without a plate because I like to destruct stuff. And a very dirty computer. Inside the computer um, sits some very, very nice stuff. Um, powers the games pretty well. Uh, you could say right there, the graphics card, that thing that says GeForce GTX is a GeForce GTX 780. Um, Asking price for that when I first bought it was 710. I think it's went down to about 510. Beautiful card. Um, handles every game perfectly well. I wouldn't even recommend a Titan due to the fact that this 780 works um, beautifully. I would highly recommend getting air cans and keeping your computer clean because that's ridiculous. Anyways, the, um, it's a it's a TR2 Thermalite 600 watt power supply um, that powers the whole computer. Really cool gigabyte motherboard that has this nice orange. Um, tint to it. We got one gig, eight gigabyte stick in there right now for the RAM. Uh, other than that, one terabyte hard drive, and that pretty much wraps it. That NI7 47.7K on the motherboard as a processor. Um, really good processor. Does an extremely good amount of. Uh, does really good at uh, video rendering. Quick, quick. That's what I wanted to say. I don't know why I just totally lost my train of thought. Um, on top of the computer sits three items. Uh, Actually, one of which was asked a lot about how I get my controller to work when it's wireless. Um, that white thing, it's a Microsoft wireless receiver. Uh, what that is, is basically it admits a wireless signal from the, the controller to that and lets you use your controller. The thing underneath it is an AudioBox 22 VSL PreSonus preamp. Uh, it obviously powers a microphone. I actually forgot to mention the microphone. Um, the microphone is AKG Perception 220. Uh, thanks to Bugs and all them, they really helped me pick the right one, I guess, if I move the pop filter. It is a beautiful looking mic. Not only is it beautiful, it sounds even better. Um, unfortunately, as you can see right this second, I'm not on my microphone. I'm on the power of an iPhone, which you all know how that goes. Um, so yeah, that's that's a PreSonus that powers the microphone, gives it its uh, juice and beautiful sound, kind of. And then, of course, the Elgato, which uh, I can capture my Xbox 360 gameplay and uh, transfer it into my editing software. So, you know, you got a uh, Razer Ultimate Black Widow Stealth thingamajiggy. I don't know what they call it. Uh, it's a way too long of a name for a keyboard, I can tell you that. Um, over here to the right, you got a Logitech 
G51S, no, G602 um, mouse has a good amount of keys on it, even though I don't use it, it's just really comfortable, uh, good for video editing. So that's pretty much the, uh, you know, the workstation on how everything is created. Uh, you know, nice L-shaped desk. Uh, the chair sucks. Uh, it's probably about to crap out of me one day when I sit down, break my neck, won't be able to do YouTube, but hopefully that doesn't happen before I get a new one. Um, so yeah, this is kind of the the outside. we got a webcam up there for any face videos, even though I don't do face cams right now. There is some face cams on my channel, if you are curious as to see what I look like. Um, other than that, the next part of this video is going to be an uh, on-screen share of kind of how to set up or get going for Grand Theft Auto. Um, I've done it a lot of times, so it's easy for me to wrap up the quick ways to do it and the ways to not do it. And, you know, as long as you can follow exactly what I do, uh, I can almost guarantee you will be playing Grand Theft Auto within the next couple hours after watching the video, unless you just have the worst luck in the world. So, like I said, next part will be uh, setting up the actual the game and all that um, with a quick desktop demonstration of importing mods where the different mods go and what type of mods go with Grand Theft Auto and go well with multiplayer and you know maybe we can look around LCPDFR I can get you guys the help that um, you know you guys really want so I hope you guys enjoyed this any questions go ahead and uh, comment in the comment section or leave a message and I would I would definitely try my best to um, get to you guys about those questions okay hope you guys enjoyed we'll see you on the next part as you can just saw, you saw a setup of my whole gaming area and how everything is created and what I have to actually power everything. So now it's the installation of Grand Theft Auto. It's been a lot of questions I've been getting. So I'm going to make this as simple as possible and I'm going to try to guide you through the steps of uh, doing it. If my background of my computer gives you a headache and makes, me want, makes you want to throw yourself against the wall, I do apologize. Um, Try to focus on the key points of this video, and then we'll be we'll be all good. So, the start of this, um, I am a Windows 8 user, and when I installed Windows or when I installed Grand Theft Auto, the one way I have to get it to work is by right-clicking on Auto Run, which is down in your computer settings, acting as if it's in there as a disk. I use a disk. I'm sorry, excuse me. I use a disk, and if you use a disk, you have to make sure your compatibility mode is set up. I use Windows 8, not 8.1, 8. And when I install the game, it has to be ran in Windows XP Service Pack 3 for the game to work and not get any errors. So a major thing is once the game's all installed and you get to the point where it's just a really basic, you have it installed, you install your patch um, 1.0.7.0. Um, I can Google that for you. It would be Rockstar. All these links I find that I use for stuff will be found in the description to make it easier on you guys um, most definitely. So basically this is where you're going to get the patch. The patch is really important. You want to make sure you're up to date on the 1.0.7.0 patch. Um, to get that you click on wait where is it? Yep this one English right here. Okay and then it downloads a title update. You open it and I'll show you the exact files you want to place in your directory. Um, if you are someone who mods your game a lot, I would highly suggest making a shortcut on your desktop of the directory that you mod. I'll give you more information of what I really mean by that. So if I right click on my icon launch Grand Theft Auto, it's going to take forever because that's usually what it does. There we go. Open file location. So this is my Grand Theft Auto that I use, my regular Grand Theft Auto that has just, just my basically my main directory. If we go back here... I have another copy. This copy is my working um, backup. It has nothing in it except a 1070 that I know works. So if I were to go and launch this, it would have no ENB. It has nothing. It's just a regular Grand Theft Auto that I can pull material from in case this Grand Theft Auto, my main Grand Theft Auto, becomes unworkable. I'll know that this one always works. Um, another thing you could do is move this onto your desktop and zip it up into an archive, and that way you can just constantly pull from it and never have to worry about you know taking a file and not copying it which says means which then means you've lost it anyways i'm not going to spend a lot of time on this i want to get to the nitty-gritty which is getting lcpdfr to work or at least installing it correctly um so what we're going to do is go to lcpdfr we were already on lcpdfr you're going to want to download the main the main mod which is obviously lcpdfr 
um, depending on you know what might really work for your system, a lot of people tell me uh, 95 works for them, 1.0 no matter what, even if I help them install it, still doesn't work. So basically, if you go here and just hover, it, it gives you the first um, gives you the first couple of downloads of LCPDFR. So if you click on all of them, you got 0 0.95. This is what, in my eyes, the most stablest version for multiplayer. Uh, at this time, I use 1.0 CM multiplayer, and it seems to work fine. I can pull cars over. I do get some bug, uh, some bugs when it comes to arresting arresting people, um, but that's that's just issues you have to realize that are going to happen when it comes to the whole LCPDFR. So you're going to download it, and I'll just download 1.0 to uh, kind of show you how to do it. There's an automatic install. No matter what, they're going to do the same thing. You can either manually install it or you can automatically install it. Um, I recommend the manual because of, you know, I'm more knowledge when it comes to installing stuff. I kind of want to see what I'm putting in my game. So we're going to download the manual version and I'll show you step by step on how to do it. It's actually really simple. I keep getting random hiccups. I do apologize. Um, they should stop here soon. So we'll download this. Hopefully none of this takes forever. The title update, I said I would show you guys what files you want to release or take out of this and put into your main directory. Basically, it's going to be everything but the patch 7 notes because it's a text document. You take this, you take this, and you take this, and you drag it into your main directory. Once you've done that, you open the update title.exe and, you know, let it run. And the way to clarify if your patch has been updated, you go to Grand Theft Auto, Properties, and you're going to go to Details if it pops up. Properties, not wanting to pop up. There it is. Details. Maybe the wrong one. Oh, the wrong one. I went to the I ICO file. Okay, so Properties, Details, and then you can see right there, File version and Product version. If they're correctly to the right one, it will say 1.0.7.0. If it's still at 1.0.0.0, then just rerun the update again until it, shows it in the properties under um, your Grand Theft Auto application right here uh, under the pro details tab. So that's just a, a quick way to clarify if your title update works. Remember at any time you can pause the video and you can rewind it, um, you know, in case I'm going too fast. So we'll go back into LCPDFR, which is on my left hand screen. So we'll get it over here and it's downloaded. So we'll open it up. We'll just minimize this and we'll open our game directory. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to do a whole lot of transfer. I'm just going to show you w what you want to highlight. Um, so you can actually highlight everything in the folder. Hold down control and click on API and user document. Unhighlight those. Those are unnecessary to have in your game directory because they're only documents to show you on how to use the mod. So for your knowledge, you might want to learn how to use it, um, but they don't need to be in there. So as you can see, everything's highlighted besides those two um, PDF files, and you want to take that stuff and drag it into your main directory. Um, once you've done that, it's it's really simple. The next steps uh, that 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 transpire after this, you just inside here, it will have this folder. Now you're, I think you're able to delete it. I keep it because it just seems to work better for me. Inside this folder, this is the original over here. I'll try to not confuse you. This is the original. It comes in the WinZip that we just downloaded from LCPDFR. We have two files, DSound and XLive. If you're going to be thinking about playing anything to do with multiplayer, stay away from XLive. And I'm not sure if it's XLive list or XLive, but I would highly suggest staying away from it. DSound is what you want. So move, what you're going to do is copy and paste the DSound into your main directory. Okay, I'm going to skip it since I've already done it. There's no real reason for me to do it. You're going to go back into this file once you've copied and pasted and you're going to delete. The XLive would actually be right there and you're just going to literally highlight it and delete it. Make sure it's out of your system. You don't need that. So now your LCPDFR 1.0 is set up and this works for me uh, every single time. I have a custom LCPDFR configuration setting um, for a controller. So basically, if you go down to the bottom, you can edit your controller settings which will be right here, key bindings for controllers. Basically, what I've realized is if you knock most of the commands off of the controller, you have a less chance of crashing because you're not sitting there pressing a whole bunch of LCPDFR commands while you're smashing your keyboard. So I would highly recommend starting to knock off some of the extra configurations through keyboards. You know, the grab suspect, the throwing them in there, grabbing the holster and all that, the taser. You want those features. 
Um, hold taser, it's going to be the right thumb. I use a controller, I'm not sure. Uh, the keyboard functions are up here, key bindings. You can uh, modify those and you can take away as many as you want. Um, you can add in police vehicles that you want. You can add custom names. All that fun stuff is in the LCPDFR INI folder, which is located in your main directory in the LCPDFR folder. You can also, cool thing about LCPDFR 1.0 is you can change the background to your 1.0. This is the or your computer in 1.0. This is the normal background that they made. Um, and you could just literally take this, you open up your Photoshop or something, or whatever you use, Paint, Photoshop, doesn't matter. Open it up, and you can either rework on it, or as long as you have the same dimensions, you can have, um, you know, you just redo it, and then you literally name it main menu, throw it in there, and you've just changed your 1.0 uh, background. So that, that's a cool thing. So now that LCPDFR is installed, you know, now you can get uh, the other stuff, the other mods that come with it. I'll just open my script folder. Inside my script folder, I have police helper, ALPR, dual siren indicator, um, a, a script that goes with LCPDFR. We have less overtake, which makes it to where vehicles don't pull around your car at a stoplight. They'll sit there for about 20, 25 seconds. And then, um, you know, they'll still try to pull around. Usually by then, a street sign will change. Um, we have policing, which is Braveheart's policing script. Uh, I really enjoy Braveheart's callouts. We have spotlight, we have radar, um, ultimate camera control. That's how I take my screenshots for the thumbnails. VD VDH canine helper and VDH police helper. That is my scripts. They usually never change and they never add more because um, there's not really many scripts being developed. So this is what I use and it seems to work efficiently for me. Um, you know, you can test all of these out. I'll try to link as many as I can just in this video for you. I don't want to clutter my uh, my description below with a whole bunch of mods for Grand Theft Auto. So um, that is the scripts folder. Moving out of the scripts, we have, you know, that we're just back in the main directory. Um, if you want, this is ELS8 I have installed. Uh, um, a key thing with the ELS8 if you're going to download it is um, making sure, where is it? Emergency lighting system. Making sure you take all the files uh, out of what it comes with because if you go in game without the D sound advanced hook and script hook all the stuff they give you in ELS 8 you will immediately crash upon entry on vehicle um, so make sure you're getting those files every time and you know you're you're putting them in your game and or friends games when you're making packs because that's how a lot of people end up crashing their game not understanding why and all that so to download you just you know download it we'll go through the wonderful security check system that LCPDFR offers us We'll uh, click here, we'll uh, click the airplane. This is so much fun. Um, if anyone wants to do this for me next time, please let me know, we'll get, we'll get that going. All right, here it is. No, but really, so you download it. Shouldn't take that long since it's ELS, about 15 seconds. Um, and we'll open it up and I'll show you the files that go inside and I'll kind of show you the, a little bit of editing on how and what does what inside there. Uh, I'm not, you know, really knowledge when it comes to ELS, but I do enjoy setting up my own ELS files. Um, it is a lot of fun. So we'll open up. This is what comes with ELS. So your ELS, INI, and ASI, those are just the stuff that sits in your main directory. Same with this. You just technically, I would never throw visual settings in because it's going to overwrite your EMB. If you don't run an EMB, I would. you could use a visual settings. It just makes your lights look better. Um, so again, highlight everything. In my case, I would not hide the, highlight the comment because I don't want that. And I just drag it in. Um, so basically what this file does is this is your key commands. Mm, sorry this is your key commands and this is how you set up your your range and your flash delay and how many cars you want on the map how 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 bright you want your emissive textures to be on the ground during specific times of the day and this is the general intensity of your lights i mean so this is this is really what you want to do for for daytime and all that which is morning you would want this kind of to be at 0.0 because that gives a negative effect on the ground because during the day you really don't have your ELS lights flashing on the ground. They're morally just flashing on the vehicle itself. Um, so you want that to be 0.0. .0. You know, you could fiddle with this stuff. If it's too bright for you, knock it down 0 0.3, 0 0.2. Um, your, your best bet is to just stick with the intensity. The range, I run mine at about 65, knock down my intense intensity to make it look more realistic so it's not painted colors. It's more of a faint... Uh, color that's lighted on the on the on the sidewalk or wherever you're next to um, up here are the key commands if you are curious as to what is what you don't know how to change it the best thing i can recommend is going to google 
and downloading um what is it called it's called dispatch assistant system and what this does is this right here and you can download this and inside of this has key commands for what you need to reference because obviously ELS the maker did not create or did not put uh, a list of key functions there for you guys to change the keys easily so you just highly I mean you can use DAS it's for multiplayer it's to a better position where your officers are so we just move that in there and then I'll show you how to uh, navigate the control list so if you open up the INI, it here is a reference of all the key commands just in case you want to change your letters for or your buttons on your keyboard for ELS. Uh, that's just a uh, little trick I use to get the key commands. So this is just like I said, the you know key command, the intensity, all that stuff of your ELS. So we could shut this down. We don't need to save any of that because it's in a WinRAR. Um, we'll move into this folder. This is where stuff gets fun. This is where you can start making you know, different, different cars and all that crap. So basically what we're going to do is just to make it easy, I'm going to move this folder out of my desktop so we don't have to worry about rewriting stuff in a WinZip. So this is a folder that sits in your main directory. And in here is a default configuration for ELS. So basically what I'm going to show you is just to make a copy. And, you know, it doesn't matter what you name it. They just all have to be corresponding to each other and all the different files. I stick by underscore config design, so I go police, oh, I'm sorry, if I knew how to spell police underscore config, okay, that would be considered my police one, so now I need to go in here, and I need to get police to correspond with police, so you would go police, police, if I knew how to spell, so then you save that, okay, so now you have your police, oh, NVIDIA Corporation, now you have your police underscore config. Now, this is where you can come in here. You can change all the lights to blue, extra one, two, three, and four. If you change all those to blue, it makes your environment's light blue. Five and six, those would be your kind of the white takedowns on the light bar. And then seven, eight, and nine, of course, those are your traffic advisories. Say you have seven, uh, which is blue on the left side of the traffic advisory, red on the right, and then in the, Jesus, and then in the middle, um, you have amber. You could do uh, blue red something like the highway patrol would use for one of their uh sticks or something you can make it look a little more i guess professional and not so bad looking uh sequentials those are your ta uh, uh traffic advisors you can change specific patterns for each on light stages uh what i like to do on light stage one is have a directional arrow going from the right to the left because most of the traffic stops you do are on the right side of the road uh, middle is usually a right to left, uh, a notion saying uh, watch out, avoid this area, and then light stage three is in and out for some type of code three um, pursuit. So that's that's the sequential primaries. Those are your primary lights. Um, you know you have an active stage for two and three, kind of gives you a really randomized look. Um, and then warning lights, of course, I use Coronas. If you do use warning lights and you have your um, strobe set up via you know z modeler that would be what you want to use if you want to use some more e els version 8 of what he created it would be coronas these are really cool because it, it makes you be able to edit a car to your liking um and give it you know tail light headlight strobes anything you would want on a car that might not have it so basically to to activate these all you would do for for these would be reverse lights so the white lights on a crown vic for instance if this was a crown victoria you would just go on okay now, this is where I got confused. It's a zero on the side. I didn't know if I, that had to be active to one or what it was. I didn't really read the user manual. I just kind of jump into stuff. Uh, what it is, is it's different patterns. So right now, it's at default zero pattern. So if you were to jump, jump in and see what it looked like, you would see pattern zero. Um, I'm not sure how much they go up to. They stop at some random points. It's something you have to test on your own. But to activate them on, you would just go from on to off. Um, settings up here... I really don't use them and or touch them. If you're working on a slick top, for instance, this would be not be a slick top in my pack that I make, and it would be off. If you have a slick top, you could do on. Whatever your comfortability is, that's fine. That's how you set up um, ELS. And then again, you would, for a new car, paste it. You rename it. Just do one more quick thing. Police. I got spelling is really bad right now. Police 2 underscore config. And then you go into your slot control. Police 2 and highlight default and just replace it with police two. If I know how, so I'm like, I, the mic's totally covering the keyboard. So that is the ELS setup. That's 
So right now we have uh, LSPDFR 1.0C and ELS installed. So basically you could hop in game, but not really because you need to be able to access your cars. Uh, the one thing that people kind of have problems with is their trainer. So you Google, uh, go to Google and you type Grand Theft Auto 5 simple native trainer. Okay, 6.5 GTA 4 mods right at the top. Now I'm going to show you a little thing that people don't really realize with trainers when it comes to the whole livery thing on cars is there's a function a function inside of the trainer setting that you have to change um, to get the liveries to work. And not only in the liveries, you have to do it in the IDEs um, in the common data section. So I'm going to wait for that to close inside here. Now this is really specific. Since this is such an old mod and you have LCPDFR, for instance, um, that has its own script hooks in it and ELS. You don't want to override them. If you override them, what comes in the simple nader, nader, Jesus, simple native, um, you're going to most likely crash upon getting inside your car. So get, all you got to do if you're running the regular Grand Theft Auto, uh, highlight these two, file, two, two files. I'm going to start getting tongue tied. I see it. Um, if you're using the Ballad of Gay Tony, all you need is these two. The Lost and Dams, you're looking at these two right here. Um, you don't need all this extra stuff, it's not necessary. You don't feel like, don't feel compelled to throw it all in your game because that's how you usually get conflicting issues. So just to work with, I'm going to take these and we would drag them into our, in our, into our main directory by um, file location. You would just drag them right into here. They sit comfortably down at the bottom. Um, I'll go into the one that's already made. So say we just opened up the document. We're going to change a setting that makes your liveries work. So I guess the easiest way to do that is, what is it, Alt F? There it is. Alt, no, Control F and we're going to search through the document and you're going to type in vehicle v-e-h-i-c-l-e -E, livery okay find cannot find loving it let me just type in the word livery it worked last time i did a little test to make sure there it is so just type in the word livery and it will find oh it's all one word that's why so you want to it's it's default going to be at one you want to change it to zero and then file save and you'll be all good to go with your uh, with your liveries being able to work. Now, another major thing is going into common data, going into your vehicles folder right down here, located north, towards the bottom, and you'll have to go into every one of your um, police slots and make sure you go all the way to the end, and you have to have plus livery. Plus livery also allows your your textures on your vehicles to change. So that's, that's majorly important. Two things you have to do, trainer I and I, and your vehicles um, dot dat folder or yeah vehicles IDE there it is vehicles IDE and it you want to make sure you add plus livery on all see right there plus livery plus livery make sure you add plus livery on stuff that you have multiple liveries on um, and then then you'll definitely be good so now you actually almost are good to go you have your trainer you have your Grand Theft Auto PDFR 1.0 and you have your ELS. That is your main functions. Now, of course, it comes with getting a police car or something fun to work with. So you would go downloads, and I'm just going to show you quickly how to install, and um, then you'll be good to go. Now, a lot of the cars that come out, a lot of modelers don't seem to put handling lines. So finding handling lines for your vehicles um, you know, might be a little tricky. I would use uh, Google and or you can go to other mods to see if uh, other modelers have placed in handling lines or anything. Usually, if you don't get the right handling line, your vehicle is going to barrel roll a lot um so just make sure you do your good uh search arounds for handling lines you can't just throw a car in and use it it doesn't work like that so we're just going to pick a random car here whoever gets picked is going to get a little uh bit of <laughs> advertisement so let's see if we can find something that actually looks cool we're, we're nearing about 22 minutes on this tutorial video but it's definitely going to be something that will help you um in your long run for making you know your game work and being able to play no problem I actually am going to use one of the packs that I used in um, one of the videos coming out for the 300 special. Uh, to obtain that, I'm just going to go into this link right here. So give me a second. Sorry if you see my Reaper off to the right right there. So this is, we're going to use the CHP pack. So I'm just going to copy this out. I'll we'll put it here. So again, in the 300 video, if you're interested in CHP cars or Oakland Police Department cars, you can download, um, you can get that from the description and then that will link you straight to LSPDFR. So we're gonna hurry up and get this um, downloaded and then I'll show you guys how to import cars. Uh, if a lot of you know how to do this, um, I'm sorry, but I just kinda wanna fan this out to make sure that this video 
hits all the simple steps that you need to actually get you know in game and start playing with your friends or if you want to join a clan whatever you want to do we want to get you to the point where you're able to do that so we'll wait about 15 seconds for uh this to finish downloading and then this is another thing if you're going to download if you're going to ha- import cars or anything uh, vehicle sounds sirens i'll show you guys how to do that too hopefully i don't forget um you're going to need some type of importation device i don't know if that's a word um to import into your main directory so spark iv or open iv i am a open iv fan always have been and always will be so grand theft auto 4 open iv that is not how you spell open um it's going to be the one from the rage research project so you're going to go to the rage research project wait for it to open and then download it right there so you download now open iv version 2.1 and i'll just open up the version i already have downloaded which is right here so i'm going to shut down all this extra stuff kind of get it a little not cluttered uh we have our chp pack installed so just drag it on our desktop shut down some of these unnecessary windows okay so delete els computer's lagging a little okay so go into grand theft auto 4 now when you first do it it's going to ask you to navigate to your main directory and there's an install for open iv which usually happens i feel like every single day at every single second um so we'll download this which is very inconvenient because i want to show you guys how to do this but we'll go into this and i'll show you guys how to you know make everything correspond right so in this he's already labeled them so police you could just drag that out onto your desktop slick top's gonna obviously okay noose i would recommend police too because that's what I would use. If you want to just use what he set up, that's fine. And you can go in here and you can get police and noose. I don't know why he has a police two file. Oh, okay, it's a vision. So the vision is the, um, that's the one with the bubble light bar, yeah. So I'm not gonna do those, just gonna do two right now. We took out the two ELS files that correspond with them. In my setup that I use, I would have to put underscore config because that's how I use If you want to just use the new setup and not any config underneath, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, I just like to have underscore config so I know what I'm using and what it's for, not just, you know, filed around at random places. So it's loading up, and then once it loads up, it's going to look a little confusing, but I can almost guarantee it's, um, it, it's very easy to use. Uh, it never takes this long to load. There it is. So OpenIV opens up, and we have our main directory that it linked to. Now, again, you can file your own path to any directory you want um, by just filing the paths into Rockstar Games and or Steam, whatever you use. Um, this is, like I said, the copy. And then this is my original Grand Theft Auto that I use for um, you know, my modding and all that, my, my videos. Uh, you just file to your models, PC images, and you can you know, access your vehicles right there. So now that we're in the vehicles, you would simply edit mode, which for you guys and your new OpenIV, it won't be automatically stuck on. If you want to get yours to that uh, to that ability, you go tools, options, and you can do a whole bunch of settings here. You can reconfigure your path. You can do default work mode, edit, or just read only in case you're not comfortable with that. So to ha- import, you go to the green, you just go to your desktop and you literally highlight and open and it imports those cars into your game i already have them because of the episode i played last night let me just see yep so this is an oakland car the chp one which are really cool els eight cars look really authentic Hundred and seventy-two thousand polys um (laughs) that's a lot of polys these are this is how you do it and it just pops open you can change the textures on it by opening up the wtd and going into the different um uh different police signs right here now with this model, it only came with one sign in the first place. Um, if the setup is police underscore sign one, you can most likely have four liveries connected. Just an FYI, in case you're curious. Um, so yeah, this is pretty much how you get your nitty gritty stuff in. Again, um, on the left, you can you can navigate through this thing to install a siren. You go PC audio SFX into your resident folder. You can install sirens via this folder. You can install horns, which is the same thing. So horns is your siren. You have your weapons, which is your gun sounds. Now with OpenIV, say you download an IVOD file, and it's it's going to be weapons.ivod. To make it work in OpenIV, you would have to knock the .ivod off, and it's going to say, well, if you do this, it might not make it work. It will make it work. You just have to press OK, 
And then the way to do it, instead of replacing it like this, because it's just going to add it in, you got to right click, replace, and then navigate to your thing where you've knocked off the .ivod and just replace the folder in general. Um, a good thing to do with OpenIV when you're done editing stuff is go to your rebuild, click on it, and then rebuild it up. So that way it refreshes everything, knocks it all together. It's going to ask if you want to open back up the document you've just rebuilded. You could say yes, you could say no. It doesn't matter. Um, all complete. You want to open it back up? No, it's okay. So we'll just shut everything down. You have your cards installed. You know, you've just uh, added underscore config, so you need to throw those in into your ELS, and you just take them, you throw them, and I'm going to skip them considering the fact that I don't need them. So that is pretty much the basis of which Grand Theft Auto is needed to play. You can add your other mods in by looking on through Grand Th uh, for LCPDFR, GTA Police mods, LCPD mods, a whole bunch of places for you to get cars, mods, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, we are wrapping up the video because it reached 30 minutes of me just blabbling on, but I hope these 30 minutes will make it to where you can get your game working. Again, please try to keep all the questions pertaining to you know, help on your game and all that into this video. I don't want to be flustered with other comments on other videos. So if you have any questions pertaining to the setup that you saw beforehand or the installation or any part we did, please be sure to comment. I will try to get back to you. I hope this gets you set up to where you can either play with your friends, play by yourself, or just get to the point where you're playing out I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope you guys enjoyed the 300 video. I will see you guys next time. <laughs>